A lot of the time, during a drop, the fight is more like a hunt. Sometimes, you think you're the prey. And sometimes, you think you're the hunter. And sometimes, you're wrong. Hey guys, welcome back to The Drop. If this is your first time watching this series, we're going to go on a drop where I drop nuggets of wisdom about what kind of thought processes I go through when planning, navigating, fighting, and extracting during a drop. It's a bit of a story, but mostly to serve as a type of guide. I hope you enjoy. If you like this kind of videos, guides, or even psycho content in general, subscribe to be part of the Cool Kids Club. Now on with episode 2 of The Drop. I start out this drop spawning at East Caverns by Woodcutters. My missions involve getting heavy strider flesh, killing mobs at power plant, and stashing some things at comms. I got a job to kill mobs with a sniper rifle, so I'm rocking a pretty standard loadout of scrapper bolty with green armor. Given my evac options, I have two main routes I could take. I could go to East Collections, then directly to base camp, and then the power plant and comms. Or I could swing north, loot waterfall labs for the elusive sample container, swing through jungle, and then hit up comms and power plant before evacing. I opted to go north since I needed heavy striders but also was looking for fertilizer and wood for quarters upgrades. Since I have no issues getting tile house keys, I decided to go use it and see what's there. But I was hearing a weird noise from inside the cave so I was cautious to see what it was. And well... Alright, now back to the tall house. I'm always hoping for a KBR prototype, but a Mark II Bolty isn't a bad find too. The lacerator is pretty much an auto sell for me as I find it's just not worth using. As I get into the room, I can hear footsteps running towards me. Expecting a grunt from a grenade throw any second, I am met with silence. I took a quick peek outside to see if he stopped a little further than I thought, but no dice. So, I decide to rummage through the containers and bait him while I keep an eye on this window. I chose not to switch to the scrapper until the last second because I wanted him to feel confident when he closes the distance. I could hear him crotch walk up the stairs so I knew exactly how long I had. I strip some meds and move on with my route. As I was approaching the edge of woodcutters, I could hear striders aggroing in the waterfall labs, so I opted for a small detour to the right. This path allowed me to keep cover and distance from a dangerous vantage point. As I entered the gate, I heard someone sprinting above me. Unfortunately, I gave away my position when I switched my weapon. I needed to get out of there quickly. He must not have been paying attention where I went because soon he made a fatal error. This fight is a decent contender for a why you died breakdown, but the quick version was, once he got headshot, he needed to create way more distance and time than he did. He should have ran downstairs to the lab, stimming as he went. Eventually, he could have caught me at a corner or something. Waterfall Labs heavily favors defensive play in peaks. I spent a lot of time here just playing in general, but also making the area breakdown video I did a while back. 
Now, I generally don't use hammers, but since they're worth a decent amount of XP, I'm gonna go ahead and bring this with me. I've been hearing consistent gunfire in eastern caverns, and it sounds like there's a fight breaking out in woodcutters. The weapons being used is nothing worth getting excited over, so I plan to continue my route, but I want to sort out this loot in peace, so I move everything inside. I make my way towards parking lot, but not by going through all the choke points of waterfall laps. When I reach the physical fork in the road, I also run into a metaphorical one too. I start to contemplate how the rest of this drop will go. My bag is already full. Granted, 15 pounds of that are the smoke grenades I need to stash. But going through jungle, shooting when I need to shoot, and finding things worth looting will be a pain to sort through my bag that's already full at this point. I check my map, and I see my other evac is nearby. So I make the decision to get the quick W and reset. I opt to take a different route more towards the lake house when I noticed the mobs in the field were all striders instead of a pair of rattlers as they usually are. So I decided to get some progress done with my job. I maintain this position by the tree because no matter which direction I get shot from, I have readily available cover and escape routes. After feeling reasonably confident no one is in parking lot, I sprint past the open clearing. As I approach my evac, I make note of two audio cues. First, the AR-55 of the lake and the silence near the evac house where there's normally a pack of striders. Since season 3 mobs spawn very fast, if the mobs have not yet spawned, there's a good chance someone is very recently here or could be close by still. I call the evac and then clear out the house. Still not convinced I was by myself, I maintained my awareness. As the ship arrived, I make it a point of checking to see if that AR-55 player was making a push for the evac, but no dice. I make a smoke screen to dissuade pushes by imaginary enemies and get on the ship. Feeling foolish until... wait a minute. Yeah, my instincts tend to serve me pretty well in this game. Sometimes, this game keeps you tense just with the possibilities alone. I would almost rather hear constant gunfire than silence because that is loads of info if you know how to decipher it. The haul isn't much, but I was given an opportunity to get out with upgrade items I needed and some decent XP worth of loot. Sometimes, you have to be able to take just a small W and you can reset for something bigger. On the second drop, I was dropping down, I had a bit of a rough time the last three drops, so when I see this drop pop up, I am all up for some relaxing tick farming and an easy 20k. I start off spawning at Science Campus, and since I'm close to the Lagoon, I figure let's give it a quick check for possible resin gun, and then I'll head to Swamp. To my delight, there's a Meteor in Lagoon as well. As I approach the area, I hear aggro on the opposite side of Lagoon. I instantly react by sprinting towards the main building. Either he's running to do the same, or he's going for the Meteor. A bit of a sloppy fight on my end, but there's a couple of takeaways. First, I heard an AR-55 and a bulldog, so I knew I didn't want to be close. I kept constant tabs on where he was and whether he had time to heal, so I knew at no point did he heal once. Once it was clear he was going to get aggroed by the Rattler, I was pretty lazy about baiting his shots out to force a reload. In the end, it didn't matter since he played so poorly. Back to the Meteor. Some quick tips on mining. Never stay still. Try to move in circles because you never know when someone's scoping you down and getting an easy headshot. Try to face the area you're most likely to get shot from. And on the fragments, if you hit the triangle looking edge just right, you only need one hit to grab it out. I do a quick sweep of Lagoon to find no resin guns and then I'm on my way to Swamp. As I pass south of Water Facility, I can hear multiple scrappers fighting it out around the evac area. Even if you have no intent on fighting, keeping tabs on where sounds happen and if you continue to hear them will give you an idea of likely trajectory of their movement. I find most players have predictable paths. With the player in Water Facility in mind, I start to hear a scarab in Swamp Camp. Unfortunately, there's really no way for me to move in unnoticed due to the birds and aggro. In either case, once I am free of the aggro, I pan wide with my AR, so if I have to fight, I can do so at the range that benefits me. And that's when I noticed the green tick.
I keep an eye out for the previous player to see if he pushes the sound while I heal. I make sure to ready all my guns and my health before I start to loot. The scare player was smart by firing on me initially, so I had some pressure to deal with. Had he not done that, I would have just charged him while he was dealing with the mobs. That first shot bought him some time, but he should have dealt with the mobs while being safely inside the building instead of pushing me. He likely took damage from the strider, which might have altered the outcome of that fight. After some thought, I figured it wouldn't be long before the storm warning was announced, and I didn't really feel like being on the planet during the storm at this moment. So, I figured just head to the evac. Since I had just fought in the area, and I knew there was a player to my north, I decided it was best to loop south, just in case he was somewhere nearby waiting for me. Approaching the water facility, I take the route least likely to aggro mobs, and I hear a scrapper firing inside of a metal building. Likely at the evac, since that's the only building I knew around that distance. After calling in the evac, I started to fill my pack and clear the immediate area. Once I did, I caught the player circling back towards the evac overwatch to the north. I could hear him knifing striders by the road, and he was finally forced to shoot the rattler that aggroed on him. A PDW scrapper combo. I heard him drop down, but at the time, I didn't realize he had fallen within my line of sight and he was super vulnerable and I could have just killed him. I expected him to overplay his aggression, but he ended up just leaving. So I'll call in the next ride when it started to attract grenades. Not for you! I didn't realize that last grenade hit me, so when I attempted fate, I got a quick whiff of humble pie before sliding to safety. Nothing to write home about for loot, but a somewhat relaxing drop to end off the night. Both of these drops really illustrate that you really don't need to push too hard to make consistent progress on missions and materials, and oftentimes, your plan needs to be flexible based on the factors of the drop. If you're new here and looking for more guides, you can check these out. Like and subscribe for future episodes, thanks for watching, and good hunting.